Transport Minister Cindy Siwe Chikunga, together with the Eastern Cape Transport MEC, is this afternoon leading a roadblock in Mtata in the Eastern Cape. The aim is to check fitness of drivers, reckless and negligent driving, as well as roadworthiness of vehicles on the N2 between Mtata and Tsolo. This operation is coordinated by the Road Traffic Management Corporation. SABC News reporter Fundi Swam Lekude has more for us, and she joins us live now. Fundi Swam, thank you so much for your time now earlier you spoke to traffic officials and you were telling us that the road that you were at is actually one of the notorious roads in which most accidents do occur uh, i believe the minister is there now just talk to us about what is happening and what she has to say Yes, the minister has arrived and uh, she took part in also checking uh, the vehicles that are passing by. And uh, we have also heard that uh, uh, on the way from the airport to Mtata, there is an accident there, but we are not sure what exactly happened. What we know is that uh, there are no injuries reported yet, but uh, we hear that uh, there was a Toyota Quantum that was overtaking and then hit a, 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 an oncoming traffic from Engobo. But the minister is here. We will be talking to her about this operation uh, that is taking place this afternoon here in Mtata. Minister, thank you very much for your time. Uh, what are you doing here today and why? Yes, um, it's part of our work. We have a plan for this festive season. We want to reduce fatalities and fatal crashes and we therefore go to provinces to encourage them to continue doing the work, working together with our politicians, as you can see, the MEC, the mayor, but also our traffic officers working with other uh, departments. So it's quite a number of people that are here doing the work. We are here also because this is the one of the hotspots where many accidents happen. There are taverns on the other side, there are houses on the other side. As a matter of fact, even if you don't know, when you see a tavern on the other side and you see houses on the opposite side, you must know that that must be a hotspot for accidents that affect pedestrians. So this is one other hotspot. You can see this road is quite big and then people cross and when that happens, when they are drunk, then they get knocked down by the car because we are here to do that. But secondly, to encourage the Eastern Cape because for now it is doing well. Not like there aren't fatalities in the Eastern Cape, but at least they are still below the numbers at which we were pre the previous year. And we are saying to them, continue doing that if possible, ensure that nobody dies after today, because it can be done, it's possible. It's not like people need to die on our roads. We can prevent that. So we are also coming to, to do that. But of course, to do the, the activation, to ensure that we are doing it physically. It's not like we're just coming here to look, but to, to actually do it. So we've interacted with, with, with the, the motorists and we're encouraging them to wear seat belts. We're checking on their cars, whether they are roadworthy, whether they have valid driving licenses. More than a million of drivers have not collected their driving licenses for many reasons. Others, they cannot because they are infringements and, and they've not paid for those infringements. And that is why they're not collecting their driving licenses. And that is why they're for checking. As a matter of fact, we can actually go to their houses and say, you have not collected your, your driving license. Are you driving or not driving? Because we have all the information in our innatus. So it's, 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 it's that and that is why we are here today. But we are anticipating the increase in terms of traffic volumes. Uh, come today and tomorrow, people will be traveling from the, from the Western Cape, uh, Cape Town to the Eastern Cape. And, and we are coming to say, let's just be ready for that. But something else that is happening these days is that good as we have accidents on our main road, your national roads, we also have quite a number of accidents in residential areas. People are speeding in residential areas where you expect them to drive at a very slow speed, but they are speeding in residential areas as well. So we are saying, how do we, we divide the resources that we have such that they are on our national routes because we expect increase in traffic volumes, but also they are in, res in residential areas so that people do not just drink and drive in residential areas. Any, um, Minister, any arrests since the start of this operation at two? Or maybe even before that, because when we got here, it was still one. Any arrests so far? I think so, but uh, I think they, they, we can actually ask them to come and give us the report because we've not been briefed. 
But I can tell you now they've already made some to pay their um, for their notices because they are they're able to check and tell a person that you are owing so much you're supposed to pay for your, your, your infringement notice you didn't pay now. So they are inconveniencing drivers, which is right. Because if they don't pay, they do wrong things, they don't pay, then it means they will continue to do wrong things. But when we make them pay, even at this time of the year, then of course they will know that maybe they've got to avoid doing those things. And that we believe will be a deterrent uh, uh, measure in as far as, as, as them not committing this. this Minister, uh, yes, drunk driving uh, all contributes a lot in road carnage. Um, but uh, we also know that there is issue of stray animals, issue of the condition of the road and uh, when we were speaking you said that uh, there is a road accident taking place in residential areas and also on national roads. There is the issue of um, an accident that took the life of a, a famous singer, who is the Dr. Radha Mbongeningema, and people were complaining about the condition of the road. What are your plans to ensure that the quality of the roads, especially in the Eastern Cape, because there are potholes on the roads, what are your plans? Let me start by extending our heartfelt condolences. First to the family of Mbonge Ningema, to the family of the Honorable Mem Tembo in, in, the East, in, in, in KZN, who is a member of parliament in the National Assembly. But of course to all those that have died on our roads, to, their, to the families we say, Awesanga Lengeslang. And then, of course, there are many who suffered serious injuries. They are in hospitals. We wish them speedy recovery as well. In this case, specific case, indeed we agree that the road is not good. But it is not the road that is responsible for the accident. It's a careless truck driver. Even if there are still investigations, but it is a careless truck driver that is actually responsible for the accident. And there is an element, an allegation of being drunk and driving. So you've got a, a somebody who is under the influence of alcohol driving a truck Turning on the roadway is not supposed to, to do that. Then, of course, an accident happens. As a matter of fact, more than 86% of accidents happen because of human factors, behavior, the attitude of drivers on the roads, the attitude of road users. That is responsible. The environment which will be your weather, whether it is raining, it is misty, which of course might contribute. The engineering, which is your road, whether it is potholed or it is curved with sharp curves and so on, it only shares the remainder from 86% and above. And even if you look at the environmental factors and the engineering factors, if our attitude and behavior is that of we would even reduce those because if I'm driving on a potholed road and I'm sober-minded, I will be able to navigate through the potholed road. It's not like we should have roads being potholed, but I will be able to navigate. If I'm driving and I'm not drunk, but it is raining and it is misty, I will know that I've got to put my headlamp on and I've got to reduce the speed because I'm sober-minded. But if I'm not sober-minded, I'm drunk, then I will drive as I wish. So it might be a combination of, 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 of human factor, behavior, but of course the environment, it may as well be the road itself or the, env the engineering factors as well that play an important role. But in this case, it is a human factor that is responsible for the accident. Even with a member of parliament there, even if we still don't, don't have all the necessary information, but it does look like, again, it is human behavior that was responsible for the accident. As a matter of fact, many of our accidents happen because people are drunk. Young people are speeding like there is no tomorrow. People are drinking like there isn't, there will not be alcohol the following day. And they do that and they get into cars and they drive. Then next thing somebody is in an accident. So you have a combination of a drunk driver and a drunk pedestrian. And that is fatal. Thank you, Minister. One last question, Minister, on the issue of potholes. Last year, there was the launch of Operation Valazonke. And since its beginning, we have seen uh, Sandral members uh, sealing potholes. But come heavy rains, that all is damaged. How are we making sure that the quality of the roads now, or of the engineering of the roads, is good? Okay. I wish I can have 
time where I'm invited by SABC to talk about the issue of the state of our roads because that's a topic by itself and it's a long one. But like you have said, we did launch the Operation Valazonke and working together with the provinces, we visited some other provinces. So we know exactly as to what they have and what they do not have, what they can do and what they cannot do, and where we can assist as the National Department of Transport. That's the first one. The second is when we then say to provinces, your strategic roads that lead, for instance, to heritage sites, that connect provinces to provinces, that also, but also are provincial roads, please hand them over to Sandra so that they can then be managed by Sandra. That is our other strategy that we're trying to use in order to assist provinces to maintain their roads. The third one are roads that get damaged by many trucks. Suddenly there is some mining and, and, and suddenly there are a number of trucks and the road is not meant to carry such number of trucks. We then have said we're going to the mining, to, to, to the private sector, to say adopt those roads so that it's you who, is, who are managing those roads and maintaining those roads. Because even if we like it or not, many municipalities will not have all the money that you require to maintain the roads that are damaged by heavy trucks that were never, the road that was never meant for that. Because you, and when you construct a road, you construct it on the basis of what you anticipate will happen on that road. If you do not anticipate any tracks on the road and suddenly there are tracks, then that road get, they get damaged quicker. But of course, um, so these are the measures that we've put in place to ensure that we, 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 we manage the potholes. But of course, like we always say, we then have all the resources that we require. If we were to have the 750,000 kilometer road network in South Africa, for instance, paved, tight, like this one, would need not anything less than 200 uh, billion rand just for construction. But even after constructing the road, you still have to have a budget for the maintenance of the road so that it lives its life. But we are trying, and I fully agree with you to say um, some of the roads, remember, water and the roads are enemies. It, it doesn't matter the quality. If you see water on the road, tight road, you must know that there's an enemy on that road. They are enemies. But of course, one other thing that hurts us most, it's when people do not have water, when people do not have anything else, then the next thing, they take tires, they bend the road. Where there is that bending, you must know that there will be a pothole. It doesn't matter the quality of the road. I was driving on another road in KZN that I know it's of high quality, but already there are potholes. And you can actually tell because there was there was some toy toying and so on and some some and you can actually tell that here we're now going to have potholes. There isn't any budget for that. There isn't any budget for that road for that time because nobody planned that at that time that road will have potholes because it's not supposed to have potholes but it's people and that is what we beg our people not to do if you don't have water then of course you can mash it is in, in the constitution it's your right but then to damage that is definitely not your right thank you very much minister cindy siwe chikunga uh, minister of transport saying that more than a million drivers have not collected their um driver's licenses from traffic depart from, from their traffic department and that uh, she's also saying that uh, it was human error that allegedly um, took the life of a uh, famous singer, songwriter and composer Dr. Mongeni Ngema. Back to you in studio. Thanks very much, uh, Fundiswa. I think you should tell the minister, Fundiswa, if you still can hear me, that we will definitely take her up on that offer and invite her in studio. In fact, we have a number of issues we'd like to discuss with her. Thank you so much uh, to Fundiswa Mslegure coming to us live there from Mtata. Um, of course, uh, they are on a roadside uh, due to traffic uh, operation coordinated by the Road Traffic Management Corporation. Uh, and that was her speaking to Transport Minister Sindisiwe Chikunga.